That She Had from their Pacifier album. The band is celebrating the 20th anniversary of its release by pressing up copies on vinyl for the very first time. Alrighty, here's Carl and John from the band to tell us about those wild and crazy days when She Had was known as Pacifier. We've, we've basically released every time a sort of 20 year anniversary comes up in, in our back catalogue, we're sort of like, okay, now's the time to release it on vinyl. And um, I mean, say what you you like about where it fits into the catalogue. It, it's a really important part of our history, you know, and um, yep. it's got songs that we play to this day in our live show um, that we're still very connected to. Yeah, uh, so so we I think we were actually looking forward to having it on vinyl to see the truth. I think, you know, right, right, um, right. Mm. So, so so have you? What what kind of memories do you have about actually making the record? You recorded it in Hollywood somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. We lived uh, in Hollywood for a long time. Yeah, it was yeah. over six months. It it was definitely a, a, a the most immersed album experience that we've ever had. Uh, and it did feel like right. it went it went on a bit longer than it probably should have, in all honesty. <laughs> but um, we had, I mean, we had pretty mixed experiences over there. But I mean, in general, I mean, in reflection, it was all worthwhile. And um, you know, I cherish the experiences on that album as much as any other. And mm. um, and yeah, with a bit of time, there's a lot of great tracks on that record. You know, and it's I, I definitely find it way easier to listen to some of those tracks than I did when we first got off the plane from L.A. Definitely. Right. All right. Uh, because, uh, of course, you went through the whole name change thing at the same time and trying to make the big push in the U.S. So was that being driven by the band or by the management or labels or were you you feel were you part on board with that or did you feel like you were kind of being forced to do something you weren't particularly 100 percent behind? No, we were all we were all into the idea of giving it a good go, you know, right. in, in America. Because when we were young, we signed a really bad record deal that basically locked us out of America um, for the first how many four albums or something like that. You know, yeah. it was like it was our time to go, yay, we can finally release something. So I think. And just where we where our heads were at after the general electric we were all sort of like well maybe it's time to start listening to other people and right. we needed to go through that and some suggestions that did come up were great but on a whole i think the big lesson was from that time period was like well actually we've got to connect to the music otherwise it doesn't all this shit doesn't matter you know all the industry shit doesn't matter and luckily there were songs that actually scraped through that process of going, oh, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? You know, and we'd never done that before, right? We were li literally, yeah. if we did say, what what do you think? It was to one of the other three members of the band, you know, right. in the past. For, this, for, for the first time ever, we were going, well, that's the guy that signed the police in America. Right. So he knows more than we do. Right. <laughs> which, isn't, which isn't true. Right. But because you've never done it before, you don't know until you go through that process. So it, it was an, it was a learning curve big time, you know? And, um, but like I say, it's, it's still got songs on it, like run and comfort me and songs that we play now, you know, that we still right. connect to. Yeah. And yeah. they tended to be the songs that were most unmolested by the industry people around us, you know? Right. You know? So how did the, how were you molested? <laughs> uh, slowly what do you it was a very slow process of molestation <laughs> pretty much yeah you know yeah, yeah, over the was, space of, awful. of uh six or seven months of um you know i mean we're in hollywood and 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 hollywood runs in a different way to the rest of the world i mean it runs in a different way to the rest of america so um it does you know we're, to a certain extent we're trying to embrace embrace that uh culture change um right uh but then still trying to work out who we were who we were who we wanted to be and 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 you know it was really hard not to lose sight of where we had come from i guess over the months right. 
Um, and it was hard to work out where the end was as well, because it just, it's felt this album process went on and on. It went on and, and on. <laughs> and, and what made it go on and on? Was it, you just couldn't agree on when it was done? Did somebody keep going, let's try this one more time? What was, what was happening? We, we kind of had an unlimited you know, it, time. Yeah, uh, we the, did. And it yeah, was the producer had just brought himself a studio. Uh, it was mm. his, la- it was his label. Uh, well, he was the A&R on the label, um, and that was all in the, the firm had become this big sort of, the, which was the label that were, or were on the label, which was a part of the firm. They just, they basically had become quite successful in that period. So there was money being right. thrown at it. And, and I guess at the beginning, it was, it was an awesome thing to be this idea that we could just create for as long as we wanted to create and 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 then have a record when we were ready to have a record but i think josh as the producer i mean he wasn't as focused as we thought he may have been or or and right. he kind of didn't lead us as well as what we could have been led i guess uh we needed to be led through right. that you know and um right. It was his world. He was. Yeah. Uh, he was. He was a one of the only people I met in in, L, in Hollywood that was born in Hollywood. And oh my god, I didn't know anyone school. was. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. He, he's, he is actually a a, a product right. of that city. He knew right. everybody. He knew you know, everyone. and um, uh, but it was actually the engineer Ryan Williams who, in the end, took the reins and went and steered it to an album being finished. You know, because. Josh was more interested in me meeting Scott Whelan from Stone Temple Pilots or, yep. you know, talking to this person or talking to this person or l- l- talking to that stylist or getting my hair cut here and stuff like that. Yep, it was yep. like, um, <laughs> and it was so weird for us because it was just like, wow. We, we, Cause we met, you know, heaps of his mates who were like, you know, from the film industry and from blah, blah, blah. And it was just like, you have to work so hard every day on what you wear and how you right. look and how you yep. present yourself and we're just like literally well today am i going to wear this black t-shirt with these black jeans or that black t-shirt with those black jeans you know and that's <laughs> the world we came from right it was just all of a sudden we were there was all these other things to think about and we were like yeah i don't think it ever sat quite right with us so. right right it's just weird and and um it was very alien from growing up in wellington you know yeah and, yeah um, so speaking of things to think about did you think about how this was all going to go over with fans here in new zealand at no, the same time no we didn't yeah. we were just literally thinking about let's make an album that's great but yep. that that can still um be played on radio that would work live um and it was that was it and and yeah like i said thankfully through that process we still managed to come out with songs that we we can literally listen to now and in fact like carl said it's probably easier for us to listen to it now than it was when we made it because there's all this baggage attached to that time in la you know September the 11th happened two yep. weeks into the recording process, uh, wanting to get out of LA, finding that LA was just this non-reality that we were pretty uncomfortable with, um, trying to second guess everything rather than going, what does your heart tell you, you know? Yep. And, you know, like in the end, we did get a collection of songs that we went, yeah, yeah, yep. those songs work, yep. but it took six months and we'd never spent six months in a studio before. In fact, like I think you said before, Carl, we'd never even spent six months on all our previous albums, you know, <laughs> so it was completely a non-reality and it, because of all that, and then, and then the name change thing happened in the middle yep. of that, we were getting all this pressure to change the name. It had all these weird connotations to us that yep. we it took a while, you know, like to come back around to those. Yeah. 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 Cause I remember seeing you guys at a uh, big day out after that happened Yeah, and you changed the name and 
uh, as a Kiwi audience, they were, I think, they, they at best confused and yep. possibly yep. thought you had somehow sold out or something. Did sure. you get much of that? Oh, yeah. absolutely. A lot of yeah. it. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot. I mean, we were, you know, you know, thinking it ourselves, you know, it was like, it felt so weird to be on stage under a different name. It was like changing right. your birth name, you know, like all of a sudden in the middle of your life. So it was, yeah. it was totally weird. Uh, it, it, in fact, though, I mean, if anything from those live shows at, around that time, I think because we'd kneecapped ourselves so hard, it made us the underdog and we were so right. determined to go, I don't give a fuck what you think about the name change. This band's still going to be the best live band you see this day, you know? So yeah. in a way, even though I wouldn't, you know, never do it again. Right. Well, they do say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, I guess. Oh, so for maybe sure. that's part of what happened there. For sure. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, for sure. sure. We, we always like being the underdog, you know? So, yeah. Um, but that was really testing. Yeah, that was super testing on us, super testing on yeah, our family. Yeah. Well, it's so funny on a more too. positive note, now that we... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say that, that I Carl? also, from memory of doing that record, I think we were like 12 or so years into our career, and I remember thinking that that was actually quite a long time. I mean, we're 30-something years into it now. Sure. I never would have imagined. But I do remember that we'd done a, we'd done a few albums, we're on to our fourth, and we've really needed new challenges. And I think yep. going over to Hollywood and trying to do the big thing was the biggest challenge that we could find, you know. And and mm. but it's funny yep. looking back now, thinking, well, at twelve or thirteen years of our career, we thought that we would, we were well into it, yet we were only we weren't even halfway to where we are now. It's, it's yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, so the album preparing it for vinyl what how involved did you guys get did you just say okay somebody please press it and let's go or was there more to it than that well we made sure that it's going to be you know remastered properly i think right. jack, jack the bear is going to probably yeah do it, which he's done yeah. all the remasters and they all sound better than they originally did you know yeah, so yeah. it's like uh, i i every time we come up to this sort of like you know you know reissue of or a 20 year anniversary it's like cool i get to hear this album in a new light you know like and um i'm really quite excited about it yeah which is you know weird considering all the things we just talked about it's yep. like i've seen the artwork the fact that it's branded under she Hard, and so we're finally claiming that album right i still you know we still play all those songs when when she had go on stage we still play run we still play comfort me and it's finally going to, they're going to be under the name she had. And I'm really happy about that, you know? Yeah, very cool. So it's been what, uh, well, you, you released Old Gods back in 2021 in October. What's the status of new music with the band? We, we just got back from Melbourne. We're writing at the moment. So yeah, yeah. It's already, that process is already underway. Mm. Right. And, and is that process the same as it was 20 years ago? Or has that changed? No, I think it's more collaborative than it was. Yeah, right. and I think we spend we think? have more less less time in the in the room together, but more focused. We're definitely are more focused yeah. at trying to trying to get Way the work done. Focus, yeah. Uh, whereas I guess twenty thirty years ago, we we tried to do eight hour days in the rehearsal rooms, which just ended up in fights and fatigue and and ear aches. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I think we do a. <laughs> Yeah, we do a we do a, a more sharp focused attempt, and and when when the energies are waning, we we walk away from the day and come back refreshed Just the next day. Away. And yeah. um, right. I think trying to find right. keep the excitement going is more important than getting work done sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So has the dynamic between the members of the band changed through the years, or is that the thing that stays the same? Oh. Oh. Musically, I think uh, we've got that. 30 plus years under our belt that means that when we try something it doesn't take too long to find the pocket you know what i'm saying right. it's like we can go i know what to do everyone knows yeah. what to do you know and it's um um that's great like that's that's an advantage that we have that only comes from playing with the same musicians for 30 years and i think we're actually probably far more forgiving with each other personally uh than we when we were used to be touring, you know, two thirds of the year with each other living in small sort of areas, you know, like 
yeah. sharing the same, you know, spaces, hotels every night and blah, 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 blah. It's like we're far more forgiving of each other uh, nowadays because we, we don't see each other as often. So it's actually like, A, we've got something to talk about <laughs> because yep. uh, because we don't we haven't seen each other for a while. And B, it's yep. like we're also a bit older and so we're not, we can afford, I think we've, we all, can all realise, oh shit, I can be a complete ass, uh, and therefore you're a little bit more um, easy on everybody else, you know, like because you can, as as you know, as you get older, you go, all oh, right, I can be a complete, you know, whatever, or I can behave badly, or blah 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 blah. But yep. um, and that, that just makes being around other people a little bit easier, you know. Good stuff. Gotcha. All righty, well, I'll let you go because I think you got other places to be and other people to talk to. But sure. uh, thank you very much for talking to me, and good luck with Thanks, everything. Thanks, Marty. Awesome. Awesome, nice man. Thank you.